We're also getting an updated look at homelessness across the metro area. It's the result of a person-by-person -person count of people sleeping on our streets and in shelters. It is called the point-in-time count, aimed at capturing the scope of homelessness on a single night. The Metro Denver Homeless Initiative conducted this year's count on January 24th. On that night, 6,888 people were counted. The last count was just before the pandemic, January 2020. Back then, there were 6,100 and four people counted. That points to a nearly 13% increase in people experiencing homeless homelessness since the pandemic began. Alan Janay on the story behind the numbers. And Alan, you found there is some reason for hope in all this. Now, let's talk about that. Right now, we're in a food pantry at Mission Arvada in the basement of the Rising Church in Arvada. And this pantry looks fairly well stocked. But the reality is they're going to have to serve about 130 people tomorrow morning, homeless and poor. And they figure they won't have enough food. These shelves will be cleared. Now, this new count that tells us about the homeless population in the metro area does not paint a pretty picture, but there are some things that may help. What you got in the cart? My clothes and my luggage. Johnny Adame pulls everything he owns along the street. Nearby, there are more people passing time on the sidewalk. If I had a chance, I would choice to be in my own place, then I would. There just isn't a place for you. All right, now. Not for Johnny and thousands of others. Inside the church that supports Mission Arvada, Jamie Reif has the numbers. We have a lot more people that are newly homeless experiencing homelessness for the first time. We have a lot more people staying in their vehicles. And then we have a lot more people that are staying just outdoors because they want that autonomy. The point in time count is one night, but through the year, over 31,000 different people seek out help for homelessness. I think the trends we saw was really around the unsheltered homelessness. At the shelter, the pandemic was one issue. Now the cost of living is another. They're getting worse. It's like adding one monster on top of another. Karen Cowling struggling to find food, but they've added help to direct people to housing and mental health care. We try to get to know them and form relationship with them. Some might need simple help, like a few months rent. Other situations are far more difficult, says Rife. We have the other end of the spectrum where people really need what's called permanent supportive housing. So that's housing, but also with the wraparound services that help keep them stable. More housing is coming, too. She does expect things to get better. But there is a lot more to do. It's, just, it's hard out here, man, it's being out on the street. I mean, um... Now, metro area agencies for the homeless are connecting more and dovetailing more, sharing information, and that helps get people into housing sooner. Now, that permanent supportive housing that Rife talks about does cost more because there are people on staff, for example, following their cases. But she points out that studies show that putting people in that permanent supportive housing saves money over allowing them to continue to be out on the streets. The question, Jim, is how much more of it can we get and how soon? In Arvada, Alan Janae covering Colorado first. Indeed.